Hello, so what we looked at in the last video is how to navigate the viewport, uh, moving around in it and also move objects. Um, so what we're going to be looking at this one is look, looking at the different uh, sort of panels and windows that we're going to be primarily using um, in this course. So what we'll do is we'll start up here first. So you've got this create button, obviously that's save. Um, got this create button, we drop that down. This allows us basically elements and sort of uh, things like lighting, uh, geography, geography, geometry, and um, cinematics or stuff like that. Um, some of these we'll be using, some of them we won't. And um, you can see here lighting, what you can do is you just drop that in and um, that allows us then um, I'll drop a little light in here, as you can see here. Um, we'll be going through some of these. Um, you've got shapes, so these are your sort of cube sphere cylinders that you can drop in to use to box out a scene. Um, boxing out scenes, essentially what we're seeing here, where you're you're using grey boxes to sort of get a feel for the scene, and then what happens is you'll take it somewhere like a blender or a mayor and create the actual proper assets for it. Um, cinematics, um, this is to with camera cranes, things like that. Visual effects, um, these are uh, we we will be using things like post processing, um, fog, um, sphere of reflection captures that captures the reflections and things like that. Um, volumes, we'll be looking at. Um, things like uh, the uh, light mass importance volume. So what that does is that basically says that anything within this box is important and anything outside of it doesn't really need to be rendered at full quality. Um, so it helps build up um, speed up build times, which we'll come across later. Um, and then there's other things here that we uh, probably won't be looking at. Then we've got the content here. This is just um, our content browser. What we can do here is I believe if we click that, that brings up um, one of the um, just a con content browser window that you can drag say, onto a second screen if you wanted to. Um, but there's another way of opening that up in a minute that we'll come to. Um, blueprints, this is the sort of level blueprints, so the blueprints for this, this game or this scene here that we're currently loaded or map. Um, probably won't be looking at that because I, I prefer for what we're doing not to use that. Obviously in games and that trigger different elements and things like that, that's great. Cinematic, that's um, how to use the master sequencer, uh, um, which we will be looking at um, a bit later on. This basic, the uh, master sequencer basically allows you to um, create a cinematic, you know, so if you wanted to say uh, we zoom in and the camera zooms in like that or pans like that, sorry, down, things like that. The, um, I believe the level sequence is only, um, it's a similar principle, but it's only for this level. So the master sequence is used for, you know, if you wanted to say, I don't know, a giant cut scene or something like that. I'm, I'm, don't quote me on that. I always just generally use the master sequencer. So then what we're going to do is move to this section here. Um, so this one is the initial selecting M mode. So this allows us to select objects here and move them. Um, so we're going to be in this a lot. Um, the next one next to it is landscape mode. So what this does, we're not going to go into this. Um, we will later in the tutorials, but I'm not going to start clicking and showing loads of things. This brings up this panel here. This is our landscape um, editor. What this does is that you can see here, if I move up, this is basically saying this is how big our uh, um, initial landscape's going to be. Um, so any anything within this reason, we can sort of say, well, well, no, I want it smaller, things like that. And then what happens is you create, uh, hit create, and then you, it gives you the ability to use these tools like um, uh, for creating, say, mountains or rivers and things like that. And then you've got things like your landscape painting here so that if you want to, say, have a really dirty track but you wanted to add some mud to that track you can using the painting but again we're going to come to all of that so the next button is the foliage tool now the foliage tool is basically allows you to drop say grass trees things that end here and basically paint them um to the onto the scene so this is useful um because you could essentially clump grass and say some uh, roses and some dandelions and things like that in together and then paint them all in one go so that you can say well you know I only want the dandelions to appear sort of 10% of the time and things like this so you can get some nice randomization but it's obviously it speeds up your um, your process a heck of a lot because you're not having to randomly place each thing you just literally grab a brush and paint them again we're going to be looking at that and um, you can do all sorts of things I think from memory with the foliage tools here is that it's um, I think handles instancing better, so it allows you to put tons of stuff in the scene and not have a huge performance decrease. Um, but uh, we'll be coming to that later. Next uh, one here is your mesh painting. So this is things like um, vertex painting. So what vertex painting is, is you could have, a, uh, we'll be looking at this again, is um, you have a brick texture here. So you have a boring uh, brick texture on this wall. 
And the thing is that, um, for, uh, obviously, when you're doing that, you know, imagine this all, all is all, all this section's all brick and it all looks the same, which, you know, is all right. But the vertex baiting is sort of like a game artist's secret weapon. And what that allows you to do is you could get that same brick texture, but make it dirty or wet or something like that and then it allows you to paint onto there so that you can have suddenly some so obviously it might be that this is a back alley wall here and the bottom of it would be dirty where it's got wet and muddy and perhaps people have been putting their feet on it things like that so what you can do is you can paint this all dark here so it looks um a little bit more lived in and a little bit more realistic you know things like that but we'll be looking at things um like that later uh the fractal tools i don't know what this is i believe this is to do with um uh, sort of um destruction um we won't be looking at this um this is this is something i think is it's probably an unreal engine um sort of four two five onwards um but this is not something i usually work in um if i do find a, a um uh, use for it in this to uh, this course i will look at it um and then this is brush editing um this is basically uh we don't know none of these are brush editing tools we uh, i will try and cover these but this basically allows you to drop a sort of a cube down and then manipulate it and sort of um almost a bit like at currently i think they're d developing this that's currently a bit like a um a uh, sort of simple version of say blender or mayo modeling tools things like that um but this allows you to get into box out scenes and then take them export them out to say blender and mayo and then create the final assets i think what i'll do here is i'll stop this video here and then continue in the next one so it's not too long on these next parts so if you find this helpful please do like and subscribe